In February 2020, coronavirus panic gripped the world. And soon enough, people were so scared that they started buying toilet paper at unprecedented paces. And as of April 2020, millions were infected worldwide with almost 200,000 deaths. Countries around the world were shutting down and telling people to remain in their homes unless absolutely necessary. There were so many people at home watching TV that European nations asked Netflix to slow down their internet speed so that, get this, the internet doesn't crash. But this isn't the first time that something like this has happened. In 1918, a similar scenario took place. Newspaper articles from that year tell us that schools, churches, and businesses were all shut down for months as people tried to stop the spread of H1N1, also known as the Spanish flu. The fear today is that the infection and death rates from COVID-19 will reach the numbers that were seen during the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic, which the CDC estimates was 500 million infected and anywhere between 50 to 100 million deaths in a matter of months. Infection was spreading rapidly, and there was even one college in Hutchinson, Minnesota that had a 75% infection rate among its students. But here's the thing. Now listen carefully, no one died. And not only did no one die, but no one was even critically ill. This was unprecedented at the time, when for many, getting this infection meant a death sentence. This is a section from a publication in 1918 entitled, Seminary Cinches Flu. Hutch Institution makes a record combating disease. Their success was so stunning that the health officer of Hutchinson City stated that, no public institution in the state of Minnesota has up to date made a record in handling influenza, the worldwide epidemic that has swept millions into their graves, like that to the credit of Hutchinson Seventh-day Adventist Seminary. One of the fears of the coronavirus pandemic is that the health system will get overwhelmed with infected patients. If this happens, there's the possibility that thousands or perhaps millions will not have access to medical treatment. So what if you or someone you love is one of those people who doesn't have access to proper medical treatment? Well, the fact of the matter is that as of today, there aren't any miracle drugs to cure coronavirus. But the people at Hutchinson Seventh-day Adventist Seminary didn't have any drugs either. In this same article from page two of the Northern Union Reaper, it says, every person showing indication of sickness was at once put to bed with a trained nurse taking temperature and watching for symptoms of the epidemic. If those symptoms developed, the patient was required to remain in bed. There were no drugs to be given. Let me repeat that. There were no drugs to be given. But with complete rest and quiet, went a carefully regulated diet and fomentations applied to the throat, chest, and abdomen. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. This college had 75% of its students infected with Spanish flu. This is an article from The Atlantic, which says, nearly half of the dead, which numbered in tens of millions, were adults aged 20 to 40. Well, students at Hutchinson Seventh-day Adventist Seminary would clearly have been in this age range. So let's see what their outcome was. As a result of this system of handling a disease that is scoring thousands of victims every day, there has not been one case that could have been called serious or a single death in the seminary, although there were more than 90 persons affected. The record is remarkable. It makes the ordinary methods of dealing with flu appear irrational. Now, don't miss this. Thousands were dying every day from this disease. This school had no deaths, and everything that they did at Hutchinson Seminary to save lives came at no cost. This is so important. Everything mentioned in that article is not only free, but more importantly, it's freely available. No drugs are free. Rest is free. Fomentations are free. And except for the cost of food, a regulated diet is free. The numbers speak for themselves. 75% infection rate, 0% mortality. And at a time when people around the world are worrying about healthcare, these numbers simply cannot be ignored. But wait, there's more. 
This is a report from Eastern Canadian Missionary Seminary, now known as Kingsway College, located in Oshawa, Ontario, found in a publication named The Review and Herald, December 12, 1918. Nearly 50 students were sick with the influenza at one time. School began again yesterday, and things are looking brighter and better. Practically everyone now is well enough to be at his duties. Even the doctors downtown feel that some unusual power helped us overcome this sickness. We believe that had we not been vegetarians, things would have been worse. Here's a report from South Lancaster Academy, located in South Lancaster, Massachusetts, also known as SLA, December 26, 1918. The boys and girls in our school dormitories did not escape. While the majority of cases were of a mild type, some were very serious, and if treated by ordinary drug methods, would undoubtedly have resulted fatally. Doctors who had patients dying day by day marveled at the fact that in our large and crowded dormitories, with practically no professional nurses in attendance, we had no fatalities. For ourselves, we attribute it under God to the fact that we put into operation the methods of treating the sick, which for years have been a part of our denominational belief. As a matter of fact, they had so much success at SLA that they confidently went out into the community to treat the sick. The health officers thanked them publicly for their assistance and said that it was largely owing to the efforts of our students that the disease was stayed as quickly as it was. Let me give you one more. This one is about Emmanuel Missionary College, now known as Andrews University, also December 26, 1918. The influenza caused our school to close for a little more than four weeks. We have had about 50 cases. All of them have made a good recovery, save one. Generally speaking, at the present time, the health of our students is good. We are planning to have a health campaign in which special instruction regarding healthful living will be given. We feel that it is very important not only that our students value good health, but know how to have it. So, here are the final numbers. 90 infected at Hutchinson Seventh-day Adventist Seminary, nearly 50 at Canadian Missionary Seminary, now known as Kingsway College, 50 more at Emmanuel Missionary College, now known as Andrews University. And while we don't have the numbers at South Lancaster Academy, let's be conservative and assume 25 got sick. So that's about 215 students in the age range that was experiencing up to half of the infected Infected deaths and there was one death. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a 99.5% success rate. So why were they so successful and who were these Seventh-day Adventists? Well, Seventh-day Adventists are a Protestant denomination that believes in not just focusing on spiritual and mental health, but also on physical health. If you haven't heard about them, they've been highlighted in the news, in Forbes magazine, National Geographic, and in my opinion, most importantly, the Oprah Winfrey Show, highlighting the fact that as a group, Seventh-day Adventists that follow the practices of a plant-based lifestyle have lower rates of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and dozens of other lifestyle-related diseases. Before being vegan became trendy, Adventists were practicing this healthy lifestyle and were historically successful at preventing disease and in the case of Hutchinson Seminary and other schools we've already mentioned, treating disease. So, what does this have to do with the coronavirus and why should it matter to you? Well, the fact of the matter is that the majority of deaths that have taken place from COVID-19 is unquestionably happening to people with pre-existing health conditions. Here are some of the numbers from the areas that have been most affected. Italy, 99% of people who died had pre-existing conditions. New Orleans, 97%. New York, 86%. The CDC, World Health Organization, and medical professionals all over the world have repeatedly stated that people with pre-existing conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and respiratory conditions are at a higher risk for infection, serious complications, and death. So here's what's been frustrating for me as I watch the news. Everything has been about social distancing, washing your hands, and whether or not we should wear a mask. 
and there has not been enough guidance about what we can do individually regarding the prevention and treatment of this disease. You need to know that there's more to this than social distancing and disinfecting surfaces. You need to know that you have more control over your health and the health of those you love than you realize. And it's time for you to get educated on what that means. We can see from the Spanish flu pandemic that something like this has happened before. And if history is repeating itself, the question you need to ask yourself is how prepared will you be physically? The thing with the Spanish flu is that most of the 50 to 100 million deaths that took place didn't happen when the disease first hit in the spring of 1918, but it happened later that year, in the fall and winter of 1918, when the disease resurfaced with a vengeance. Now, I have no idea what's going to happen, neither does anyone else, but I know that we should be doing two things. Number one, we should get as healthy as possible, as quickly as possible. And number two, we should find out what these Adventists were doing to treat people during the Spanish flu epidemic. Are the Spanish flu and coronavirus exactly the same? No, but health principles were valid then, and they're still valid now. So we can wait around while people continue arguing about masks and vaccinations, or we can take charge of our health today. Of course, there are no guarantees in life, and even the healthiest person can fall victim to disease. But the numbers don't lie. Now, I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I'd put my money on a 99.5% success rate. We'll have more videos coming up to provide info on what you can do to stay healthy so that you can be prepared for whatever comes when it comes. Hope to see you again soon. Take care and stay healthy.